Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Robin Nelson with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And tonight, my co-host, Nicole, wasn't able to make it tonight, but I just wanted to give a shout out to her. And um, she is so fun to have on the podcast. That girl is my ying to my yang. <laughs> and tonight's guest um, is a very good friend of me. I've known her for a very long time. Um, actress and paranormal investigator, Rachel Hoffman. How's it going, Rachel? Great. Thank you for having me. It's been too long. It's been very too long, and I've been looking forward to this, like, all week. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. Um, Let's talk about, how did you get the acting bug? Um, It's a funny story because I really don't act. Um, I was in Ghostbusters, the female Ghostbusters, uh, you know, last year but I had just been on the set you know hoping to meet Bill Murray and not really like out there putting my name out there and COVID happened and I was sitting at home kind of taking a lot of selfies because I was bored and I decided to kind of just get dressed up every day of COVID so that I didn't get depressed and um, one of the producers for Axe to Grind Scott Stanford got a hold of me and he asked me if I would like to be part of the Axe Grind movie with Stormy Daniels and Debbie Rashawn. And, of course, I was like, oh, my gosh, yes, if that's possible, that would be great. And so he kind of, like, paraded me around a little bit. And I had a high likability factor. And they basically added me to the cast. My name's Honey Voodoo in the movie. And I'm super excited about having a first and last name. I felt like it was extremely monumental. I talked to Spencer Gray, the creator, and he told me that I am allowed to let everyone in on the concept of the movie, which is changed and now at its final point. And it's going to have a very, very strong feminist vibe. So just get ready for a lot of really strong female roles. Um, Also, my bus is going to be in the movie. Um, the one that I modified to live in. So I'm very excited about that. And that's up and coming news for everybody to share and get excited about. I'm preparing the bus right now to uh, drive to Oklahoma. And shortly after that, uh, Josh Graves from the House City Flesh got in touch with me and asked me to be a lead role in the House City Flesh. And I accepted that also. That's very exciting. Uh, that's an 80s, uh, very like, uh, we're, we're trying to vibe with the aesthetic, but it's almost got a comedic value to it. So we're very excited. We have our Indiegogo campaign going on right now. started November 1st, and we are rapidly making it uh, to our pace. So we have, uh, I think, around 50 more days to make this happen. And if anybody's interested and you've ever wanted to be a producer or be part of a horror movie, are part of the horror family, especially the indie family, which is expanded and amazing. Uh, now's your chance to jump on that train and join the House of Eats Flesh. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, seeing that. I, I'm going to um, put some money into it as well. Um, when I saw the trailer, um, Josh Graves had me at my attention. It's like shut up and take my money. I mean, I just <laughs> I just love that. Um, I just love that teaser. It was just so good and bloody. It reminded yeah. me, you know, when I was younger, going to the drive-in theaters, you know, seeing the last of the Grindhouse films before they disappeared, where everybody yeah. started going towards more to the movie theater. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the movie and what's it like working with Josh Graves? Josh is amazing. Um, he's such a positive soul. He really is. He's really on board with pushing all of us in this um He has basically been an amazing creator and allowed us all to be a producer of our own of sorts. He made me a producer on the movie also. So we've been putting together clips and he's kind of been using parts of our real character to formulate these these characters that you're about to see on the House of Flesh. So they'll be slightly more organic to who we are, which is great. Um, And we're all looking forward to being in that house for 14 days together and kind of seeing what happens that's going to be fun for you and that's so cool you got the lead role um also uh lisa wilcox stars in it as well you know from the nightmare on elm street films what's it yep. like to be on set with uh, lisa wilcox 
Um, well, I will find out this May, which I'm very excited. I'm such a fan geek of all of these horror things. I'm so humbled to be a part of this. And you know how I love the horror scene and the paranormal scene alike. And so to see these women side by side with me, it's, and, and in an indie film, which is so, it, it speaks to the truth of the, the love of acting uh, to take part in something so amazing and so creative that, you know, I, and some of my favorite movies are indie films. And I think it's really great to be a part of it. And, and the fact that she's been amongst so many greats is, I mean, it's mind blowing. I bet it is. Um, I got a chance to meet Lisa at a convention, and she's a really a down to earth, genuine kind of gal. She's really fun to talk with, and she really does take her time for all the people that come and meet her, which is pretty cool. Because some celebrities will be like a quick two three minutes, but she's one of those nice people. Who actually, um, you know, talk to you, you know, for a little bit, which is even cooler. Yeah, I think so too. Keeping it down to earth. Um, I've been in the the horror scene for a while now when I was doing some paranormal events and stuff and we were mixing genres. So I had the pleasure of meeting a few of these people uh, before even embarking on this journey. And I am realizing now that I'm brushing shoulders with them again and being able to be side by side with them is, I mean, like I said, it's mind blowing. Um, On the set of The House That Eats Flesh, um, do you have like a, um, so uh, so how excited are you looking for? And so far, have you had a a memorable moment yet? Or do you think you're going to have an awesome memorable moment in the film? Yeah, I think so. Um, We're going to be filming out in the beautiful area of Burlington, North Carolina. So we have a house that is amazing, first of all. And uh, just to see some of the graphics packages and things like that that are being created and stuff these wonderful, uh, you know, CGI's. It's amazing. And all of it coming together, it's going to really be a bloodbath that people are going to enjoy. Um, we spent some time doing different blood scenes to see what we could do to enhance the, the vibe. And we have some really amazing things in store. Yeah. And uh, what's it like working with the, you know, the main villain, the one who's going around killing everybody? <laughs> it's scary. I think that we can all put ourselves back into the 1980s curled up in a blanket you know waiting for you know it's jason and freddie were our top at that point so i think we can always revert back to the really great aesthetic value of the 80s and how it really scared you and kind of what you didn't see scared you just as much as what you could see um i got a question for you um since 2020 uh, has been um, a considerable uh, horror drought at the theaters this year d- uh, due to the pandemic, um, how have you managed and um, what were other ways satisfied your horror craving since a lot of big horror releases were delayed? And sp- uh, also, you know, when you're like filming different films. Basically, I did a lot of reruns and I started looking for some inspiration in a lot of the uh, 70s and 80s horror um photo shoots and so you'd be surprised to see how much these women and men were actually uh the the 70s was a little softer with a little less of the blood where we know the 80s really brought home the term bloodbath um visually people were in love with even jaws i know that you know we don't oftentimes view uh these other movies horror movies but that really shook me knowing that You know, there was a true monster in the ocean that could do that amount of damage to a human body. Um, But also the value of the the bloodbath is is slowly being returned. We're missing that right now. People are keeping it so clean. I totally agree with you. Um, I miss the early 70s horror, you know, the gothic horror. And, um, you know, like the Hammer horror films in the 60s and early 70s, that's when it started getting like real bloody. And I loved it more than the CGI today. And the cool thing about those movies back in the day, they would use like music in certain scenes, you know, that really, you know, scare the shit out of you. And and they would also like put it in your mind, which, you know, made the story even more scarier than uh, some of the horror films today. Absolutely. I think just like what I said, sight unseen uh, can scare you more than actually seeing it. 
Yeah, I'm like I said, I'm excited for the house that eats flesh. I'm looking forward to seeing you know all that great bloody gory. So you're saying it takes place in the 80s. Um, I kept on thinking it was going to take place in the 70s because of the trailer and how you look like very you know phenomenal you know in those uh, pictures for the film with all the you know 70s you know outfits. You were rocking it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna bring it. We're gonna bring it 70s to 80s. Um, the reason we're capitalizing more on the 80s is due to the blood bath factor. Mm-hmm. Um, we're up a notch with the. You know, we we want to thrill and chill, and that's part of the excitement. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it because I like the bloodier the better in my in my thoughts. Yeah, and I'm definitely going to have to get Josh on the podcast and talk to him how he envisioned this. You know, great fun bloody gore bloodbath <laughs> yeah definitely definitely he's he's amazing he's got a vision um he's uh he's really fun to work with. like i said super positive person keeps everybody super well informed um he's very excited you know we're all excited for this um and he's been amazing uh we all are kind of putting our heads together and figuring out um the travel circumstances and stuff of course now i'm going to start to travel with my bus to these places and i'm pretty sure we'll figure out how to squeeze the bus into a little bit of every movie and my bus's name is xavier so we'll make xavier his own little fan page (laughs) that's pretty awesome how you uh live in a bus i like how you uh you know um fixed it up and it looks very um comfy and homey in there you know like like a real home and what got you into deciding to get a bus and living in it I think that it was the fact that my kids are getting older and I was kind of looking for a retirement plan. And then I, you know, I was doing really well right before COVID. I, um, you know, I was mastering things at work and things. And then I got cut off in the middle. I bought the bus and then I was kind of like left with the bus, all the seats in it and everything. Um, And then COVID happened and I decided to kind of just put my, put you know my groups of people together that were willing to help for like hamburgers and beer and basically everybody kind of put their head together and hands together my best friend Victoria she helped me a lot and um you know I had a lot of really great people in my life that offered me things that made the budget for what I was trying to create really low and and ascertainable that's pretty good because um I I like your bus and I'm looking forward to seeing it in person you know uh sometime next year i'm, I'm gonna be yeah. like it's gonna be fun <laughs> yeah salem witches that's right salem witches that's right <laughs> uh, and then your horror film you did uh which you were talking earlier on the podcast um acts to grind um what was that like working with stormy stormy seems like she's like a a wild freaky kind of person um i get the pleasure of meeting her in four weeks oh okay so i thought are- you met her okay no, uh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. She has so many of the same interests as me with the photo shoots and with the um, ghost hunting and stuff. She just got her show off the ground, Spooky Babe. Nice. And she also has an RV, so it's just we have a lot in common, and I'm really excited. Uh, we have really, really great chemistry. Um, Brianna and Nicole also, we've all been vibing. Um, we've been doing different podcasts randomly together and kind of bumping into each other online. And just we, we have a really great vibe, and I'm really excited. Um, my character is side by side with Debbie Rashawn and Stormy Daniels, and I'm very excited to say that they made me more mainstream of a character where I was just kind of supposed to be in there somewhere. Um, after a while, uh, Spencer got to know me, and of course, all the struggles and and all the wonderful things that happen in the in the feminine world when you're beautiful and accomplishing things that you have to deal with haters and a lot of different stuff. So I think that. Spencer decided to capitalize on that feminine vibe with very strong female roles and very strong uh, themes to verbalize how he feels about this wave of um, empowerment. And I'm very, very proud to be a part of it, to be honest with you. This is the way that the script wound up manifesting. It wound up to be something magical where at first it was like, okay, you know, I was there. I was in there. I was more than happy to be any part of the, the scene. But now I feel as though I'm very much a part of it, and it's a true depiction of my personality. And Honey Voodoo is a badass name. Oh, I, I'm intimidated by Honey Voodoo. I wouldn't want to mess with her. <laughs> yep, so I'm very excited. Again, my bus is going to be down.
down there. Mm-hmm. It'll be, um, I'll be leaving on Black Friday to head to Oklahoma, and I'll be doing a short stint. The, um, the television series that I'll be doing, they're switching times. I might be going next Friday to film. And at that point in time, I'll be leaking little things onto my page, but not too much because I'm under contract. So what type of TV series is it going to be? It is a paranormal TV series. Mm. I know that a lot of people were confused when I wrote it, and that was my point. I wanted to drive people to listen instead of just watching um, and to let them know that it is a different version of anything that they've seen. Again, the wonderful thing is my bus is going to be a part of all of my next ventures. So I'm really excited to um, to be offered these opportunities, and I'm really hoping that everything flies off without a hitch. Um, you know, television can be unpredictable sometimes, but hopefully we come up with some great magic and we're able to produce something that people can really take their teeth into. Um, the both films that you're starring in, um, The House That Eats Flesh, Axe to Grind, of course, um, are you going to be like, uh, traveling to uh, once you know this craziness is over with this COVID, are you going to be like traveling from different like horror conventions to promote them? Yeah, that's my goal. Um, Scarlet Abbey is my agent, and so I will uh, put out her information after May. Uh, I'm doing another movie called The Vacation from Hell in July, so that's a short by Robert Best, and we'll be starting our Indiegogo campaign this winter. Um, we've decided to use the, the uh, cabin at 360, which is amazing, and actually is already really haunted. So I'm really excited to venture out that way. I plan on going a couple days early and leaving a couple days late to take advantage of the paranormal aspect. And the owner and I have been friends for quite some time on social media, and we've just reconnected. And what a great location, because it's factual and actual, and um, we're going to stay there for the entire end of the movie. That's going to be fun, especially, you know, it's haunted all that. That's going to make the filming and everything really great and, you know, more freakier. Yeah. It's going to make you get into more of your character, you know. It's going to just bring you out. Yeah. I'll be the paranormal girl again. It's like, <laughs> I'll just do it. I can't help it. I see ghosts. Oh, you see ghosts all the time. Um, yeah. You also did a lot of, you know, uh, you're a paranormal investigator. And if you've, I mean, you've investigated everywhere around the United States. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is the truth. That is the truth. Um, I'm very proud to say that I have had opportunities offered to me throughout the years that are rare. I have been to places and seen and met people that have been amazing. And I know that when I first formulated my trio group in Boston with my sister Danielle and Tina, we had all started out on this venture kind of like fun loving and going out to these locations and we got noticed pretty quickly um you know before I think we weren't even out there a year before Zach Bagans asked us to be on the paranormal challenge and after that we had so many opportunities open to us because people wanted to meet you know meet us after they'd seen us on tv they wanted us to investigate their area they really like the aspect of having three females which you know can make the investigation completely different uh, than having a male presence and also there's benefits of both i'm not there's no there's no disrespect to either one but i noticed i have a very strong connection to child spirit wow i could i could see that i i, I yeah. mean i bet you can feel that i bet you probably even feel that even right now <laughs> really do i feel very warm um you know then i have i've had you know things that pretend to be children that come through on the equipment and that can be scary too so but we have all of our own very unique uh positions as males and females and we both blend this incredible energy to the other world and we're able to kind of pull different things so there's there's extreme importance in having that feminine vibe in the paranormal i think so too um I have, um, you know, some of the same people as I do in the paranormal field, and um, I've been out with some of them too. And I'm like a little magnet too. I'm, I'm considered a sensitive, and for some reason, every time I go out, I always end up picking up something. I don't know why. <laughs> hitchhiker. Oh yeah, it's the hitchhiker. But you know, I know what to do. I'm not too. I always tell them they have to stay there. They can't come home with me. And luckily, um, you know, none of them have followed me home. Thank God. 
Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah, that can be scary. I had that. Uh, it's funny you should mention that. I I was told, uh, you know, over the years that people had believed that I had an attachment. Uh-huh. And I honestly was feeling it. And then on the blue moon on Halloween, I did, I'm a witch, and I did a spell to kind of just get rid of all the negativity and bring back, like, positivity to fill the space and just like a lot of really great things and positive vibes for everybody and kind of banishing anybody that didn't have my best interest at heart and it felt like um, something lifted off me and since then I have just felt like a lot lighter I bet um, since you're a witch you can probably feel probably like auras and everything else on other people you can probably just sense that when you talk to somebody definitely yes um, since of all of your, you know, uh, paranormal investigating, um, you probably had a lot of stories. What was the most, um, memorable, uh, case you ever had that was like, you know, uh, oh my God, you know, what the fuck? And it still stays with you today. You probably have like tons of them, but is there one case that just still sticks out to you today? There are, there are so many. I like to touch on different ones each time, um, I, I think the one I would have to go with at the current moment that's coming forward to my brain is Mercy Brown. Okay. And she's the first New England vampire. Uh, she she passed away from consumption. She was one of five children. And by the time that the fifth child, Edwin, had come upon the sickness, the father was, you know, beside himself losing his fifth and final child. And Edwin, in his delusion, in his sleep, had imagined him taking uh the father taking mercy out of her grave taking her heart out of her body and making a charred heart liquid for the brother to drink so that he could be cured now during this time mercy had been you know she passed away during the winter and when they dug her up uh they found her to be juicy so she was still juicy because it was cold and she was thawing out but lack of medical knowledge led these people to believe that her blood was alive in her body because she was a vampire. And so that actually started, that was actually the, um, the inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula. Wow. I did not even know that. Wow. I learned something today. I learned something from you, Rachel. <laughs> That's yeah. If you wind up going to Exeter, Rhode Island, the, um, the, the, the tombstone and the, uh, it, it's surrounded by lots of loving items now mm-hmm. that people go back and, and give her praise. Mm-hmm. But the uh, the vault where her body was is to the right. And I went over there and I was trying to talk to the father, trying to just make any kind of contact. And I, I was, started raining out. And so I put a plastic Walmart bag over my obelisk and I placed it towards the uh, towards the vault. And you can see that I have my hand on my phone taking the picture of the obelisk. And the obelisk is going towards the um, the doorway. I'm all by myself, and there's a hand curled up over. So, like, trying to grab the device in my hand. Wow, I, that that's wild. I'd be freaking and, out. Uh, well, I have it. I'll, I'll actually post it after we finish our conversation. Uh, you can clearly see it's a it's a person that's got heavy, heavy set hands or like fat fingers mm-hmm. and they're curled up. And so I knocked three times on the two or on the, on the vault and someone knocked back three times and I caught it all on film. Cause at that point I was so gung ho with all these videos and doing the YouTube thing. But that was scary. I bet it was. Um, you need to come over here in my neck of the woods. Ohio has a lot of paranormal, and cryptology stuff going on like crazy. Yeah, cryptoids. Ooh. Yes, cryptoids. We are famous for the dog man. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Um, there's been um, sightings around, you know, Germantown, Ohio, and, you know, out in the woods of Ohio. And it's like this uh, half human like dog creature, you know, looks like a, like a, like a demonic type of dog. And it, you know, walks on its hind legs and, um, it's been really frequent. And, um, on my, uh, paranormal podcast, I talked to one of the uh, researchers on the dog man and he took me out to Germantown, Ohio to see if I can pick up anything. 
And the only thing we found were like, were like, you know, tra like, uh, you know, tracks of something that could have been it. And, um, um, we also heard like some growling. I don't know if it was the dog man or not. It could have been like a dog or whatever, but, uh, he, yeah. he took me out side of Germantown, you know, cause they got a lot of, you know, woods area and it was just creepy. It felt like, you know, uh, we were being watched, but if you ever get a chance, you should look up the, the dog man. Oh, absolutely. It's funny. Uh, it's probably the base for some of these horror movies, the original ones, like the Wolfman and stuff like these, these things could have possibly been sightings, you know? I think so too. And, um, also, um, have you noticed like in today's independent horror films, more and more independent film directors are more going towards monster films now, you know, like, you know, like from back from the fifties and sixties, it seems like there's more films about monsters now than, you know, like regular horror. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, people are, people are just kind of, I hate to say this, recycling the monsters. I would really like to see something different and out there and, um, you know, unheard of it. You know, we've all seen the vampires, mm -hmm. the werewolves, you know, like I, I love Van Helsing personally, mm -hmm. but I'd like to see something, you know, emerge. Like what else is there? Can we come up with some new stuff? I think so too. And I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, what got you into falling in love with horror and what was the first movie that dragged you in and really scared the shit out of you? So, I was six years old, and me and my best friend at the time, Debbie Rugen, I've lost touch with her, it's been a long, long time, uh, but we, she had an older brother, and he had gotten into her playroom and hid all of the Freddy versus, or Freddy and Jason movies, it wasn't even versus yet, that was way in the infancy, um, so we had watched the entire you know, uh, the entire series of Freddy and the entire series of Jason basically overnight while we were hiding in the playroom. And we just thought we were so slick. And it's funny because I wasn't afraid. I kind of had a crush on Freddy. Um, so I'm different as, you know, as we know. Um, but I had a crush on him and I was like, you know, this is cool. This is very cool. Like, here's this guy, like he's got these great, you know, claws, and he was just an incredible character, and since then, I've met him three times, and he's an amazing person, an amazing actor, and I got the opportunity um, doing the uh, doing the horror cons in Rhode Island, and a lot of the um, comic cons um, out in the East Coast area, and in Florida, I got the opportunity. Uh, when The Walking Dead was extremely prevalent a few years ago, um, they were doing a few of the um, zombie cons, and I, I jumped on with some of those, and there was a really great cross-genre of a bunch of actors and actresses, and um, oh, the American Horror Story uh, cast was there, too. That's pretty wild. I can see you being the character on uh, a season of American Horror Story. You would fit right in. I hope so. Well, we can see. I'm um, I'm saying yes to everything at this point. Um, you know, everything that's notable and, and, and makes sense to me. I've really decided it's the year of the woman, and I've decided to kind of super submerge myself in this, um, this new opportunity. I, I have never had this kind of um, attention before outside of the paranormal. And so, and I'm 41 years old. I'm getting these casted these characters that are younger than me, which I'm extremely flattered. Um, and I'm really just embarking on the opportunity. I feel better than I ever have. Um, you know, being independent and, and coming out of all of the trials and tribulations that I have, I feel that I, I'm just a new preacher. I can see it um, in your post and um, your pictures. You can tell... Um you know, there's like a great change of you. I mean, I'm, I'm so, I'm so proud of you. I mean, I'm glad you're getting all these great opportunities and I hope, you know, good things happen to you. I mean, like I said, I've known you for <laughs> a very long time, but the funny thing is we ne actually never met, but we've known each other forever on social media. Yeah, yeah we have, um, back in the Twitter days, Oh, I know. I remember on Twitter, you like hit me up and we started talking and you're like, 
there's something about you. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I saw the magic. I did, and we've been on quite the journey over these over these past couple of years, and it's been amazing. I I like to watch you blossom, also, and it's been a really strange, crazy past ten years of everything from what's going on in our world mm-hmm. to what's going on with our politics, and you know, a little bit of everything. But the one thing that stays consistent is our love for the paranormal mm-hmm. and fashion, of course, and and horror added to that. And, you know, it takes away the, the everyday stress of worrying about what's going on out there in the world that we can't control. Entertainment generally used to be almost half of our paycheck. I mean, I know for myself, I mean, I'm a selfish girl like that, but <laughs> I, love, I love to be entertained and it used to be movies. It used to be going to the clubs, going to the bars, you know. And now we're looking at our homes as the next entertainment. Like, so we're trying our best to bring people the entertainment straight to their home because at this point in time, that's what it's looking like. It's looking like there's a possibility that we're going to have to learn how to entertain ourselves. And the, the, the aesthetic also of the almost blockbuster Friday night is kind of going to come back into theme. I think so too, and um, I I do like watching some stuff that's streaming. But I'm I'm a I'm an old fashioned kind of guy. I still like to collect my media. I like to have a hard copy in my hand so I can just go into my library and watch whatever I want. I mean, I stream stuff. I know it's going more into the streaming nowadays, and I have a feeling that you know DVD, Blu-rays, uh, you know 4K. Movies are going to slowly, you know, disappear, you know, and I'm going to try to get as much media as I can. (laughs) Yes, I know. That's what I'm afraid of, too. And we don't know. Like, so I've been filling my bus, of course, with all, you know, all my favorites, all Marvel, DC in there, everything horror. Like, I I just like to make sure I keep myself full. And my friends now are bringing me more and more uh, movies uh, because we enjoy entertainment on my bus. I just have a small television, but... We enjoy sitting back there and hanging out, and believe it or not, my bus, for the size that it is, holds the capacity of a couple large people, so I've had, you know, 10 people in my bus at a time, and we'll be in there, you know, drinking and hanging out, chilling, you know, we all have our um, our different levels of entertainment, but I'm even going back to, you know, like, what about Bob, like, you mm-hmm. know, like, the comedy that has the value it's funny, I watched the Dave Chappelle stand-up the other night, <laughs> and you'd be surprised, with my friend Tom, you'd be surprised um, how much his political standpoint still, they hold true. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, he's discussing the funny side of things, where it's not funny, but we're all laughing because we know it's true, Yeah, about the struggles that he goes through as a black man in, you know, with the law. And with all those things, and, and, you know, we have seen this throughout the course of time, but there are things that stay true. There are things that we can see, and, and, you know, they're funny because they're true, but it's also, you know, you got to think, you got to think long and hard about a lot of those things. So I like the comedy value. I enjoy the old uh, superhero movies. It's just all good. I think so, too. And, um, you know, um I'm also in my 40s, too. I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, but, you know, I'll, I'll be, like, 48 at the end of this month, and I'm like, wow. yeah, and I don't even look it. People's like, no, no. you're not. <laughs> you, know, you don't have the, your energy. is so young, and your spirit is so, like, you're very full of life, which is amazing, and, you know, there's a lot to be said. I know people act like when you're 40, it's over, and I'm... I'm, I'm it's not. Well, no, it's just beginning. Honestly, I wouldn't change it. I've had people ask me if I was going to lie and say I was 25 when I turned 40, and I would never take away from who I am and what I've been through. I think I look better than I did when I was 20. I feel better. I have less financial stress. Like, this is, it's it's a triumph to be where we are, and people look at it as an aging factor, when now these days we're living to 120 years old, 60 years old is middle age. Like, we're literally, we're surpassing that hate limit. Uh, by, by 80 years. <laughs> I think so, too. And uh, I'm like you. I, st- I still act young. You know, it's like, you know, that's me. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be one of those old born people going, 
Oh, I'm just going to sit here and not do anything. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like you. I got to constantly do something. But since the whole pandemic, man, it's been preventing yeah. me, you know, from, you know, traveling, going to different conventions or, you know, doing some investigations uh, with um, some friends in the paranormal field, which is, you know, you know, pretty hard. Um, so uh, this past Halloween, uh, did you check out that video Nicole and I did about Teen Wolf? <laughs> it out i was having a house party and i don't know if you saw the pictures but i had like literally 20 little tiny children here <laughs> so I, I was trying my damnedest but i was wrangling children <laughs> but i have to check it out <laughs> yeah you need to I'll, I'll i'll send it to i'll send it to you it's it's great and uh her husband pete's part of it too and then when you see the whole you know team with thing we did you're just going to be busting out laughing it's like <laughs> oh my god and that's cool you've been following me too i didn't know you were following some of my stuff um yeah i've been keeping up with you heck yeah i always kept up with you too you know to see where you're going to be going next i was like i wonder what rachel's going to be doing next man i gotta i gotta see so um so um you i i know there was a post you did on, um, on facebook i believe that you made your own ouija board are you are you are you the one that still collects ouija boards yeah, I, I did have quite the collection. Yeah. Um, after my breakup, my ex kind of took over some of those things, but not a problem. Yeah. I'm going to be um, buying uh, some land out here in upstate New York, and I'm actually opening up a Ouija bar. Wow. And it's going to be, yeah, an alcohol-filled <laughs> spirits and spirits, um, and I'm going to be building my Frankenstein which is going to consist of bones that will be in complete form from different people. So I will have the head of Frankenstein is a geriatric man from Indonesia, and I will have his backstory in the bar. Um, he'll be my main piece, um, and I will have different collections of Ouija boards, um, both that I make and that I've collected over the years. I have a lot of people donating amazing things to my little cause, and um, I'll be embarking on that journey over the next 24 months. And I'll be very verbal about it <laughs> and let everybody know. I want everybody to come have drinks with me and chill with me. Oh, you don't want to have drinks with me. I'll be making you bust up all night long. You'll be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, what? <laughs> I can't wait. I know you're gonna. I, I guarantee it, man. When when I finally come out and see you, you are going to get the biggest hug ever. I don't think I'll let you go. I'll be like, I guess I'm gonna have to kidnap you and keep you for the rest of my life. <laughs> Yay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's oh, so. Where can everybody find you on uh, social media and follow what your next projects and all that great stuff's going to be? I just. My Instagram is private, so I just started a new one, Rachel E. Hoffman, and I'm going to be just promoting a lot of the movies and stuff, not anything really personal on that page, mm -hmm. but I have maintained my regular Facebook page, which I have, like, I think my maximum amount of friends on there, but definitely keep, uh, watch out on YouTube. I'm going to be creating some new content for the paranormal over the winter, mm -hmm. um, the, tr the true crime aspect, where I'm going to... Um, look for the victims of Albert Fish so I'll be doing a docu-series um, independently over the winter um, in, during my break in between the movies you know I like to keep busy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically it um, and definitely like just go check out my IMDB I have a couple new announcements coming out over the next couple weeks and we should definitely do this again and catch up because I have a couple things coming up um and I'll be able to discuss more. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to be doing next. Um, Rachel, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I, as always, have an amazing time with you, and I cannot wait to make the magic happen in Salem next year. Oh, we're going to make the magic happen in Salem. Trust me, it's it, it's <laughs> gonna, it's going to be in the it's going to be in the history books. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, I like this guy." <laughs> yes, yes. Especially, all, especially all the witches, man. They're gonna be like, "Hmm, I like this guy. This guy has some good energy." <laughs> yeah, the charisma. The charisma, yeah. 
Um, everybody, uh, thank you for listening to Horror Pop After Midnight. You can follow Horror Pop After Midnight on Facebook, Twitter at Pop After. Um, you can follow, um, listen to our uh, platforms on uh, Podcast City Network at PodcastCity.net, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and all the, um, and of course Spotify, but all the great you know platforms you can check out Horror Pop After Midnight. Everybody have a great evening.